Huh? That was wonderful. Thank you. Oh. Mm. Hey, welcome back to Dad Bod Barbecue. Today we are going to be doing some spare ribs. These are going to be called uh, as American as apple pie ribs. We're just calling them apple pie ribs. We've got a couple of packs of spare ribs here that are well wrapped. Oh yeah, you want to get this? Yeah. So this is a little trick we picked up from Chef Jean-Pierre. There's a cap full of bleach and some dish soap to make it sudsy in here. Nice warm water. It's just nice to have on hand when you are preparing food. It's good to sanitize with. So as you can see here, we've got a couple of racks of ribs and they're <laughs> ill-proportioned. I wanted two racks this size. These were the last two in the case over at Off the Hook Meat Shop and they couldn't open another pack until these were both sold. So I just got them, it's no big deal. I'm gonna be trimming these down and it's a pretty simple process. Try and stay with me. I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly. We have a little chime bone left on here. I'm gonna cut this right off. And what I like to do here is clean up the ends a little bit. You don't want any of the, like see this right here. It's good pork, but it's not gonna be good for ribs. So I'm gonna square the end of this off and you can set that aside. You can put that into anything you're gonna use pork for. I wanna try and get off any of these little edges. So if we look down here on this side of the rib, see this thick fat? I'm gonna get that right off of there. And you don't need to do too much trimming on these. These are really nice ribs. These ribs that you get from the butcher shop are typically a higher quality than, you know, the cryovac packages you get from the grocery store. I love this intramuscular fat. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for thickness. These are nice thick ribs. I'm looking for this intramuscular fat going across the top. And on the back, I'm looking for some decently straight bones. With spare ribs, they're always gonna be a little canted. This one was nice and straight here. They get a little wonky, but that's okay. On the back, I'm gonna be pulling off this membrane. I use a paper towel for this. You can get a knife or something and get under it over here if you need to, or you can just grab it. You know, I can grab the end here, get it away a little bit, try and get it across the hole of the membrane, and then use that paper towel, grip it and rip it. And it should come off in one piece, just like that. Mmm, delicious. Then you can come back in here and any of this globular fat you could just take off. I'm just gonna run my knife right across it. I'm not gonna be too, too ginger with it. I'm not gonna be too careful about it. You know, I don't wanna cut into the meat, but I just wanna get off most of this fat. I'm not gonna be crazy about it. Spend maybe a couple minutes doing this. If you see any silver skin, like here, don't be afraid to go ahead and remove that. That's not going to allow anything to penetrate. Smoke, seasoning, you name it. So go ahead and remove that silver skin or membrane or whatever you want to call it. Now they did a pretty good job butchering this, but sometimes you'll get the flap. Here's a piece of it right here. And you can take that right off. I'm just going to trim it right off because this is all going to be on the bottom. It's all going to be wasted and it's just going to char up anyway. And also there is some of that membrane on here as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up. Just kind of skimming along, getting some of this thick fat off of here. It's totally unneeded. Trying not to cut in where the bones are. You don't want to create shiners. That's a shiner right there. This is a good example. See this right here, how the bones sort of protruding through. If the membrane wasn't over that, that would pop right out when we were cooking it. All right, I'm going to keep going and clean these up just a bit more, taking off these little bits of fat that will just come off in my hand. Most of this is going to melt right off of here, to be honest. And again, I'm going to cut off any of these little flappy parts. See this little corner here? That's something I don't mind getting rid of. That'll just burn up. And you can actually take off any of these angles as well if you don't want the sharp edges. Sharp edges always burn in cooking. And I'm gonna clean up the next rack of ribs and when I come back, we're gonna season them. Okay, now that these are all trimmed up, I'm just gonna add some seasoning. I'm gonna do one line of mustard as a binder. Yikes. And then I'm going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar to get the flavor, the apple flavor started on these. Boink. And then you just want to rub it in. Now, like I said, we're calling these apple pie ribs or as American as apple pie ribs. That's a little too long of a title though. It's going to be delicious either way. We're using all the flavors that we've already used in the past. We know what we're 
we know what we're doing with these ribs. Once this is all on here, you want to go ahead and start to apply that rub. Now I'm going to be doing two rubs. The first, I'm going to be doing this Chupacabra Rib Noxious seasoning, and this is amazing on ribs. This is going to be my base layer, sort of a, a little bit more of the savory flavors. And then I'm going to be following it up with, this is the Grillmates Applewood seasoning. This is actually the first rib rub, or I guess the first rub I ac ever actually made ribs with when I started making them way back in the day. I don't know if it was called Grillmates at the time, but it was a McCormick Applewood seasoning. And I loved it then, and it's still really good now. I'm gonna start off with the Rib Noxious, and I'm just gonna do a really light coat here, just to get some of that on there. Start soaking up that binder. I'll do the sides once I flip it. Flap at. And now for our apple component, our Grillmates Applewood seasoning. And I'm gonna put this on kinda liberally. Just give it a little pat, a little general patting. All right, now that we have these seasoned on the bone side, let's go ahead and flip them and do the presentation side. And you can put whatever seasonings you want on here. You can just do salt and pepper. You know, if you're just doing ribs to do ribs, you can do just salt and pepper. You can add your favorite barbecue seasoning. You can make your own. There's so many out there to go ahead and emulate or to experiment with. Once you get the original flavors down, you can make your own. It's actually really easy to do so. You just got to experiment, keep trying new stuff. Looking good. I'm going to go wash my hands and then we're going to bring these out and put these onto the grill. These are ready to go. I always season my ribs just before I put them on. I never go more than an hour prior to putting them on the grill because I feel like anything with a salt content is going to pull too much moisture out of these thin ribs. You know, thin, ribs don't have a ton of meat on them, so I want to keep that moisture contained for now. Let's go put them on the grill. Okay, so as you can see, we have this set at 250, but it's up to 265 right now because it's on the alpha smoke mode. Uh, with the Gorilla Grills alpha smoke controller, when you use mode two, it's alpha smoke. So it has a bigger swing, but pro provides more smoke flavor. We've got some apple wood pellets in here. And we're just gonna be laying these on the grates. Anywhere between 250 and 275 is what I'm going for for the temperature of the grill. And we're just gonna pop them in, close the lid, and that's it. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna come back and check these in about an hour. Hey, so we're back out here at the grill and I have a mixture of 50-50 apple juice to apple cider vinegar. And I'll, I'll show the brands that I used in the, in the little clip here. So let's open this up. Here's our ribs. You can see they're starting to get dry, right? No rub coming off on my finger. This is the perfect time to start spritzing. These are nice and dry, right? This mixture is going to impart some flavor, but it's also so it doesn't burn on top. You want to stop the cooking process on the outside so that this bark forms but doesn't get super crusty and hard. And you can see I'm adding quite a bit on here. I've got it on a mist. But I'm really wetting them down pretty good. And just make sure you get all those spots. We're going to close it down. Okay, so now that we've spritzed these ribs down, we're going to spritz them again probably after about 30 minutes. And we'll keep doing that every 30 minutes until I wrap them. Okay, so we've been spritzing every 30 minutes. And it's been two and a half hours. Let's take a look at these. We have a nice dark mahogany color on these and they're looking amazing. That rub just set on there. We've got some pullback on the bones. See here, nice pullback. That's good. Okay, so these are almost done. I'm gonna give them 30 more minutes, spritz one more time, and then I'm gonna wrap them up so we can finish these out. Okay, so these ribs have been on for about 3 hours and 20 minutes. A little bit longer uncovered than I wanted, but we're going to take a look at them right now. 
yeah, this is exactly what we're looking for. Look at that bone pull back. Nice color on the top. These are ready to wrap, absolutely. And what we're looking for here is do they bend? Not yet, right? They're not completely done. A little bit of disintegration on the back, but that's all right. We're gonna get these all broken down. Now look at that juice, you see that cracking? That is perfect. That's exactly what you wanna see. These look amazing. All right, let's go in and wrap them. So now that we have these ribs inside for a minute, and you can do this out of the grill, but it's so hot out there. We live in Arizona, so it's very hot. Uh, we brought them inside to wrap them up, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. I've got some butter. You just want enough butter to have enough for the ribs to lay in. If you do it by pats, it's about five pats, four to five pats of butter in a regular stick. I'm gonna go ahead and spread this right out because we left it out to soften up. Pretty good. You can even lay your ribs up on top here if you want to uh, see the size of it, but I'm eyeballing it pretty good here. I think we're good with that amount. I'm gonna set this to the side so I can do my second rack. Okay, so I'm taking this apple butter to stick with our apple pie theme, and I'm gonna put three large dollops on here. One, two, three. I'm gonna spread those around just a bit. This has all kinds of great stuff, cinnamon, obviously the apple flavors. This is gonna add a whole different layer to these ribs that's gonna be absolutely delectable. It's gonna taste just like an apple pie, only pork ribs. Okay, so now we're gonna be adding some brown sugar, just about a handful, sprinkling it out. Not too much, we already have a lot of sweet stuff, but this is just, I mean, what goes better with apples than brown sugar? Not a whole lot. So I'm gonna add just about that much. Then I've got some honey. And you gotta have that honey in there. Let's do a little bit. Again, I'm not super loading it up, but enough to get that sweet deliciousness on the ribs. And now that I have this, these ribs are going meat side down. This is a perfect time, and you can see we have really good disintegration here. This is a great time to get rid of all these little chunkies, these little black pieces you don't want on your ribs, because those aren't pleasant to eat, but it's a good sign for these ribs. These are looking awesome, smelling so good. Good, whoa, bone already came out. And if I was to guess at the temperature right now, I'd say it's probably around 165 to 170. Not too worried about temperature. I'm, not, I'm worried about tenderness and getting these broken down. So I'm gonna wrap these up. My method is to bring up both sides. if it allows me to. Try not to break anything. Try not to have the bones poke through. And I sort of bring the center together and then I fold this over. So it really traps all the steam in there. And I can kind of pull it down so the ends come in. Cause you want to get this as tight as possible. I do a fold there, fold here, fold here and here. All right, perfect. These are ready to go back onto the grill. I'm gonna do the other rack and then we'll go throw them back on there. Okay, so with this one, we're not gonna add the brown sugar or the honey. We, we did the butter and the apple butter and that apple butter already has sweetness in it. So I wanna really gauge the difference between the one with the honey and the brown sugar than the one with just the apple butter. Both of them have regular butter. So I'm gonna lay this meat side down just like we did the other one. The only caveat here is I'm gonna give this one a few spritzes on the backside of that apple cider vinegar. And we are going to note the difference once they come off the grill, what the difference is in taste and texture and everything else between those two different configurations. Okay, and I'm gonna wrap these up just like the other ones and we'll go put them on the grill. Okay, so we're putting these back on. We're gonna put them in the same place as they were when they were cooking. Now, now that these are back on, we're definitely going to keep an eye on them. I'm going to come back out in one hour and take a look at them. I have a feeling because we left them on a little extra uncovered, these are gonna cook very fast in the foil. I don't wanna get them to that fall apart texture. I just want them to where the bones would separate easy and that they're bending at about a 90 degree angle. So we'll check in in 45 minutes to an hour and see how they're doing. 
All right, so it's been about 50 minutes and we're gonna check on these ribs. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, disintegration. Now what I'm looking, oh yeah. These are done, we're gonna bring them in. Okay, so we've brought these ribs inside and we're gonna sauce them up now. Let's take a look at what we've got here. I'm gonna take them right out of these packages. You can make a foil boat out of these, but I'm just gonna do them on these pans. We'll be very careful with these. Hello, beautiful. See what we've got here, the drawback. Look at that, perfect. And the bend, see how it's at like a 90 degree bend and it's breaking, but not quite falling apart. That's exactly what you're looking for. Okay, let's take a look at rack number two. Hot. Boom. Perfect. These are roasting hot. You definitely want to either use utensils to move these around or these nitrile gloves with some cotton inserts underneath. All right, so we're gonna be mixing up a little sauce right now. I've got my bowl here. I've got some room temperature barbecue sauce. I'm gonna pour about a half a cup in there. A little room temperature vinegar sauce, also about a half cup in there. And then the magic is going to be this apple jelly, probably about another half cup or so. Just eyeballing it. That's good. Now, I'm going to heat this up real quick so that apple jelly breaks down. These are going to be good. So this should be all good to mix now. Okay, we've got it mixed up pretty good now. This is gonna be an awesome barbecue sauce for this. Nice and sweet, but also has that barbecue-y tang. I'm just gonna drizzle it on here. We'll smooth it out in a bit. Just gonna get a nice layer on. We don't need to do the underside. I'm just gonna do the top side on these. We've got so much flavor going on here anyway. these have plenty of sauce on them I'm just gonna sort of kind of I'm gonna get the bones here but I'm gonna sort of just kind of shimmy the brush across I don't want any real big standing pools of sauce get the sides here same with the smaller rack In the back here we're looking for that nice glazy look to them. No, no brush strokes. That looks badass. Let's go put these back on the grill for about maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so we brought these inside and they are resting and they smell unbelievable. I'm super excited to try these ribs. They came out absolutely awesome looking. I'm just going to cut into them here see what we're working with yeah careful oh yeah let's cut one off right here so this is off the big rack look at that smoke ring nice and juicy still a little bit tacky sauce but that's awesome Let's give it a try, shall we? Oh, man. Mmm, I need a napkin. Mmm. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that. These are unreal.
I don't care. I'm eating. Oh, these are so good. I can taste everything. The apple butter really stands out. What a surprise there. I thought that was just going to be one of the side notes, but it's so good. Is my face clean? I keep getting it wet. Yes. Man, that apple butter is unbelievable in there. These are incredible. They're sweet, succulent, juicy. So the apple butter that I taste, the reason I say that is I can taste the the different seasonings in there, not just the cinnamon, but the different uh, seasonings in the apple butter. I can definitely taste the rubs on there. The sauce is a perfect touch at the end. These are so amazing. I, I have a feeling everybody's gonna absolutely love these ribs. Everybody's really excited to eat these ribs, so I'm gonna cut these up and we're gonna go eat dinner. So definitely give these apple pie or American is apple pie ribs a try. These are perfect for the 4th of July. We're gonna eat these, we're gonna watch some fireworks, we're gonna get in the pool again, and who knows what else, it's gonna be an awesome night. So definitely, definitely do this, and what can I say? Do it exactly this way and you won't be disappointed. Try it out. Well, don't forget like, subscribe and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, good enough.